Hi everyone, I'm Michelle from michellesmidheaven.com and today I want to share with you my chart of the month. Everyone who subscribes to my new moons letter receives some monthly forecasting as well as a brief chart exploration. And for my most recent new moons letter, I explored the chart of the Marquis de Sade, who was an 18th century nobleman and libertine writer. There was so much to say about him and his chart that I decided to turn my chart exploration into a video for you. Saad is the man whose name inspired the term sadism, and he's probably best known for his novel titled The 120 Days of Sodom, which is about an aristocrat, a bishop, a politician, and a banker who organize orgies and who torture and slaughter their victims. And he didn't only write about the stuff, he also acted out his dark fantasies. So where do we see that in his natal chart? Well, let's take a look. Okay, let's see what we can find out about his character first. Saad's personality is described by the first house ruler, which is Mars. And we can see that he has a daytime chart because the sun is above the horizon. And in daytime charts, Mars is oftentimes the most troublesome planet in the chart. Well, Mars happens to be super powerful in this chart. It's in the sixth house, which is said to be a weaker declining house. But in this case, Mars is being pulled out of that sixth house into the open, into the 10th place, which is the second most powerful house of the chart. And this is happening by virtue of a close trine to the degree of the midheaven. Mars is also in its own temple, Aries. And in the sixth house, Mars is said to be in its joy. Now, what that means is that Mars has all the tools to express its significations of individuality, boldness, courage, adventurousness, but also conflict, war, violence, and pain. So Mars is going to be Mars to the fullest, we could say. But again, this is a daytime chart. So Mars is not necessarily on its best behavior. And in fact, he was, and I quote, known as a rebellious and spoiled child with an ever-growing temper. It's important to note that Mars is also closely squaring the other so-called malefic planet, Saturn. And while Saturn in a daytime chart usually offers some very good qualities that are helpful to the native, here in this chart, we find Saturn in the sign of its detriment, Cancer. And it's also co-present with the North Node. And according to ancient astrologers, that would make Saturn a little more malefic. Saturn is conjunct fixed star Procyon, which is known for verbal and mental intemperance. Saad was his parents' only surviving child, and his father abandoned his family. Exiled Saturn rules both the third house of siblings and the fourth house of home and family. So Saturn is literally exiled from the family. And oftentimes the symbolism is that simple in the chart. His mother abandoned him too, and she actually went ahead to become a nun. The moon, as a significator of the mother, is in Virgo, or the image of the Virgin. And in this case, the moon cannot see the fourth house, or even Saad's significator, Mars. So Saad and his mother are, again, very literally, not connected. And the moon is ruling the ninth house, which is associated with the monastic life. There are some signs in this chart that Saad received some protection. And we see, for example, that our fortunate planet Venus is very close to the ruler of the fourth house, Saturn. So after his parents abandoned him, 
Saad went to live with his uncle, who was a priest, so ninth house signification again. And this priest was, according to Saad, he introduced him to debauchery. The ninth house is also the house of education. And at school, he was subjected to severe corporal punishment. And he was said to become obsessed with violence. And that really speaks to this Mars again, making a superior square to these planets in the ninth place. When he was 15, Saad became a soldier and fought in the Seven Years' War against Great Britain. He was described as deranged but brave by his superiors. Saad's son is placed on Rigel, the fixed star that is known as the constellation of the king and is associated with fortune, martial honors, and wealth. Jupiter is co-present with the sun. That's another sign of protection. At one point, an angry father of one of Saad's victims attempted to shoot him point blank, but missed. Jupiter is in the eighth house of death, but it's debilitated in the sign of Gemini. So we can also expect Jupiter to be a little less noble. And we find Jupiter on fixed star Bellatrix. Bellatrix points to a philosophical and religious mind, but also to hypocrisy and fanaticism, to legal prominence and great honor, but at the same time, there is also a danger of slander. So I think this fits the profile very well. And it's quite amazing to see how much Saad got away with. Not with all of it, though. Now, when he returned from war, he married a rich magistrate's daughter, and they had two kids together. Two kids, and funnily enough, uh, the ruler of the fifth house of children is Jupiter in a double-bodied sign. He continued living his libertine lifestyle, though, and he repeatedly invited young prostitutes as well as employees and children only to abuse them. As a member of the nobility, he got away with it. He was also accused of blasphemy, which was considered a serious offense for which people were actually executed. And this blasphemy is perfectly symbolized by yeah, this combust god of faith and religion, Jupiter, in the eighth house, where we often find rebellion. The combust condition means that Jupiter is said to be burnt up by the sun because it's too close to the sun. And as I said, it's also exiled in Gemini, right? And another clue is perhaps that debilitated Saturn in the ninth house of religion. Saad was in prison many, many times for his crimes, though uh, his in-laws usually secured his release. We find his very wealthy in-laws uh, through the derived fourth house from the seventh, literally his wife's parents, with its ruler, the son, co-present with Jupiter in the eighth house of crime and punishment. Now, these eighth house uh, planets point to his dependence on shared resources. And thanks to Jupiter, he was able to escape prison on several occasions. He also received a lot of help from his wife, represented by the ruler of the seventh house, Venus. Other times, he fled to Italy. So there we see another ninth house signification come to life, and that is exactly where that lucky Venus is. Finally, his mother-in-law got sick of him and asked the French king for help, and that's how he was finally sent to prison. Now, in traditional astrology, the mother is generally represented by the moon, but also by the ruler of the 10th house. 
And we can find Saad's mother-in-law if we use the technique of derivative houses. We want to find his wife's mother. So we start counting from the seventh house, his wife, until we get to the 10th house from the seventh. And that is how we end up with the fourth house and its ruler, Saturn. So this means that Saad's mother-in-law happens to be represented by Saturn, the god of punishment and imprisonment. And it is in prison where he worked on his magnum opus, the 120 days of Sodom. He was unable to finish his work though. He always kept it hidden, but at some point he was suddenly transferred to an insane asylum without any of his belongings. So he had to leave his work behind. Jupiter here in Mercury's sign and Mercury as of course the god of writers, Jupiter is hidden under the beams of the sun and it is the ruler of the fifth house of children. And in a more symbolic sense, we can say that the fifth house is anything that we create and bring into this world, our creative products. And his work was found later, but it was kept secret or under the beams until around the beginning of the 20th century. When he was finally free, his wife divorced him. This was a year after the French Revolution, during which his castle was destroyed. And in desperate need for money, he started writing in favor of a libertine revolutionary section. In other words, he made a Jupiterian move by going into politics. And the French elected him, despite the fact that he was an aristocrat and despite his terrible past. Robespierre soon had enough of Saad because he despised atheists and he threw him in jail. He was actually supposed to be guillotined, but miraculously he was saved from that fate because of Robespierre's downfall. It's interesting that the sun and Rahu or the North Node are forming Antisha here. And I've explained this technique in one of my other videos. So please check that out if you haven't yet. So the North Node or Rahu is the severed head of the dragon, while Ketu or the South Node down here in the third house is the dragon's tail. So probably thanks to Jupiter again, Saad did not lose his head, at least not yet. Saad left politics behind after this brush with death though. And he focused on his erotic fiction and a censored edition of one of his novels was published titled La Nouvelle Justine, which included over a hundred explicit illustrations. And when Napoleon, laid eyes on it, he ordered Saad's imprisonment. In prison, Saad assaulted his fellow prisoners, so he was taken to the insane asylum once again, where he started an affair with the daughter of, the, of one of the employees there, a 14-year-old girl. And this affair would last until his death four years later. Saad was 74 when he died. Now, in his will, he had explicitly forbidden his body to be open for any reason whatsoever. But this was ignored, and his skull was later removed from the grave for phrenological examination. So there we go. This Antisha, the Antisha between the sun and Rahu, became activated after his death. Even though he was criticized by many, he was also praised by some of the most prominent 20th century philosophers, among which feminists like Simone de Beauvoir. His manuscript, The 120 Days of Sodom, was even declared a French national treasure as recently as in 2017. 
Okay, this is what I got for you today. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And you know what would be absolutely wonderful? It would be so great if you would subscribe to this channel and to my new moons letter if you can, if you want to explore some other charts with me. So to subscribe for free, please head over to my website, michellesmidheaven.com. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.